the important thing to know is that having a student loan program on the government's books looked very expensive. And so Lyndon Johnson came up with this idea, and it wasn't just him, there were others, but basically his idea was, let's just have banks make loans to students. Therefore, no, no money has to come out of the treasury, at least on the front end. And so if banks are doing it, um, then it'll be off our books. And therefore, uh, the, de the federal de deficit will be unscathed. And so this sounded great at the start, but banks don't do things for the good of their heart. They want to make money. And so banks basically said, look, if you want us to do this, this, this is what's interesting. Banks ended up making a lot of money in the long run. But at the start, they like didn't want to get into the business of student lending. Because, um, because it's, it's money to an 18 year old. There's no collateral. And maybe they graduate, maybe they don't. So it's an unknown risk. It's not like a mortgage where you kind of know what's going to happen. Um, and, yeah, and exactly. It's expanding access to lending. So I think you can also draw a parallel, right, with the government sponsored entities like Fat Fannie yep. Mae, Freddie Mac. Right, right, exactly. Um, and 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 that that is a very good point. There was already a model that existed going back to the Great Depression, where the government, um, because of what was happening in the Great Depression with the housing market and everything else, really started to try to use taxpayer money to incentivize banks to make home loans to households. Um, and so there was already this existing model and LBJ wanted to basically adopt that model, model for student lending. Yeah. Um, so what ended up happening in the name of reducing federal spending, mm -hmm. he actually, he and Congress actually increased federal spending because in order to get banks to make loans to students, not only did he have to say taxpayers would cover the loss whenever students failed to repay, Congress actually had to guarantee banks a profit. Um, so it was like sort of a double form of insurance. Like not only are you agreeing to cover any losses, you're actually going beyond that and saying, we will pay you for every student loan you hold. And so the, it, it ended up becoming a very expensive program in the long run. But um, when you're passing the, the federal bu budget each year, it looks, it looks like a smaller hit in that year because all of these subsidies you're giving the banks plus the potential losses that you're gonna accrue when students don't pay, those don't show up all at once. They show up over a long period. And so it looked cheaper in the short run to do it this way. It actually created a whole ton of problems in the long run. 